Hey guys, 86 Vicky LX here again. Well, I thought about it, and a lot of people were, a lot of newbies on GMN have been asking, how do you run a code scan on a OBD1 Ford product? Well, I'm here to answer that. See this here? This is an EEC test connector. EEC stands for Electronic Engine Control. Now what you have here is the STI connector. That's what Ford calls it. The self-test input. Basically you can run a self-test if you just ground this wire. But on some vehicles they don't have an actual check engine light that is connected to the uh, that's connected to the computer for diagnostic trouble codes. So you can use a light or something to probe this connector on the STO, the self-test output. It grounds the light and it will flash codes at you, pretty much. So basically, let me show you how this works. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but I think I can manage. All right. So this is a Ford code scanner. It's pretty cheap, about maybe 30 bucks at your parts store. It's for OBD1 cars only, so it's only for the Ford, but that's okay, because that's what we're working on today. All right. Now, as far as I'm aware, 1986 models didn't originally come with a check engine light, but because I no longer have the idiot senders for uh, for the uh, oil pressure and coolant temperature, I installed I installed it. <sighs> Basically, I made the idiot light act as a real check engine light, which was fairly easy. I just took the one wire that was on the coolant temperature sender and applied it to the STO wire on the uh, self-test connector. So whenever there's a trouble code that the computer seems that it needs to display, it will throw the light on. Okay. So I'm going to run a code scan. First thing you want to do is make sure that the uh, engine is up to operating temperature. You don't have to, but if you don't, you'll get some codes that might throw you off and cause you to replace sensors that don't really need to be replaced. Um, so, he would turn this on, then he would hit the test hold button. Then the computer will go into self-test mode. Now that says 8 there. That's signifying that it's an 8 cylinder. When it actually flashes it on the, uh, com on the uh, check engine light, it will flash half of the numbers of cylinders that the computer is rated at. So what it wants you to do at that time when the light flashes, or when that 8 comes up on the display, step on the brake and turn the wheel 180 degrees and turn it back. Then you just let it go through its cycle, which shouldn't take more than about a minute or so. Now this is a sequential fuel injection vehicle which means it doesn't have a throttle response, a throttle snap uh, code. Some models have you have it go through the test and then at the end it'll flash the light once and it expects you to blip the throttle, step on it all the way and then let go of it. And if you don't do that you'll get a, a throttle position code. Now here, it finished, it finished the uh, I finished the uh, thing. Now it should start flashing codes. I think I already know what it's going to flash. Now see how it paused there? And now it's flashing again. The first digit was 9, and the second digit was 4. Here comes another code. was code 44. 1, 2, 3, 4, pause, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Now if there are no other codes, it will repeat the codes that it already repeated once. Now you can check back over here. And it does the counting for you, so all you have to do is look at the display. Now these come with a nice little uh, nice little booklet that describes to you what each code means, which is pretty nice. 94 and 44 are actually uh, air injection codes, which is just for that smog pump that's down there. Now, it's giving me these codes because I don't have an air pipe hooked to the back of the heads because the GT40P heads don't have provisions for the, for the pipe. Now, if you have a sequentially fuel injected vehicle, you can do a, what is called a cylinder balance test. Now, how you do that is, once it's done displaying the, the original codes, you just lift the throttle a little bit, and it will go into that mode, which it will raise the idle, and it will numerically kill each injector and look for an RPM drop. If that RPM drop isn't seen, then it will throw a, a code in for whatever number cylinder it was. Say number one failed, it would give a code 10. What you're looking for on the, on the cylinder balance test is a code 90, which means all cylinders pass the balance test. This test takes about a minute or two, and for ideal results, you want to do it three times so there weren't any hiccups. You can hear the change in the exhaust note and how the engine's running. Exhaust note changed. That's basically what a misfire sounds like. One cylinder is completely dead. So it'll kill each injector numerically, starting from one. One, two, three, and four are on this side of the engine. Five, six, seven, and eight are on this side of the engine. See how the hood's dancing around? See how it doesn't dance around when all the cylinders are going? It's almost done. It's got about four more cylinders or so. Sometimes I lose track. Actually, it's done. There. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's what you want to see. Now with a long pause, it's done that code. Shut it off, take it out of self-test mode, you just press it off, or you just replace, or you just remove the, uh, the wire on, on this, on this connector here, and then you'll be out of self-test mode. Alright, that's it for now. 
See you later.